what became the most important thing was to reach out to the people that I love the most and articulate how I felt about them. Even if my speech was slurred, I wanted the last thing that my kids and the people in my life to know was to hear me say I love you. February 21st, 2023, getting ready for work. Everything was fine. Got there, was getting ready to present to some new associates. And I realized as our director of well-being was finishing his presentation that I saw two of him. Couldn't tell if it was my vision, a headache. Went up to the emergency room and they started running some tests to rule out stroke. Ultimately, they thought maybe it was an ocular migraine. They couldn't find a source for why I was experiencing double vision. And I just went home to rest for the rest of the afternoon. But when I woke up on Thursday morning, um, I couldn't speak. My speech was extremely slurred. That shook me to my core because now I can't see, I'm barely able to speak and I can't walk or, or use my hands in a functional way. And so my husband drove me back up to the emergency room and that's when things started to get real. With her particular case, knowing that this has been seen before once or twice and it seems to be getting worse, that was the key. This was getting worse. The symptoms were becoming more severe by her report, even if I didn't see it on exam. Could this be a demyelinating syndrome? Could this be Guillain-Barre? Could this be transverse myelitis? All these weird things that you don't generally see. We had received notice through the hospital system that we were going to be experiencing some inclement weather. The amount of snow that they were projecting was going to be very unusual. And my symptoms and Everything that was happening with me physically just coincided with this severe weather that we were anticipating. It actually turned out to be worse than we were anticipating. There was no transportation available that day. All the rooms started getting full. Our transfers were, uh, started getting delayed. We couldn't fly anyone out, which is what we normally do. We knew that we had to get our medication. We don't have the medication. We weren't going to be able to get her out for days. We had to get the medication in somehow. This deep fear hit me. Everything in my body was out of control. I realized that I might not have full use of my speech ever again. And so what became the most important thing to me was to reach out to the people that I love the most and articulate how I felt about them. Even if, sorry. Even if my speech was slurred, I wanted the last thing that my kids and the people in my life to know was to hear me say I love you. And that they were the greatest things that have ever happened to me. So we started to look around. We called all of our sister hospitals at Adventist. Through different uh, outside resources, I'm not super familiar with what it, uh, how they got it there. They had to get pretty creative to get them over. I think some law enforcement and a courier. I think there was about three teams working together to get it all here. So it took a village and just to get a little bag of medicine. But that bag of medicine was so important and we got it. And then they were able to figure out how to transport me to a hospital with a neurology unit. They loaded me into the back of the ambulance and we began the hour drive, which was considerably longer just because of the snow. I am a backseat driver in the best of circumstances. This was definitely the worst of circumstances for me. I was like, are you sure you can go that fast? Can we slow down a little bit? <laughs> The neurologist met with me, um, determined that I did have an autoimmune um, disease, that this medication was the best course of treatment. And he looked at me and he said, you know, Leanne, that team in Clear Lake did an amazing job because they were able to stop the progression. If it had been even a couple hours longer, your respiratory system probably would have been compromised. I was going to make a full recovery on my own. And by Wednesday afternoon, they released me. I walked out of the hospital just me and my two legs. 
it was pretty special. It was pretty fantastic. I got to see my care work to actually see somebody improving from something that could be life-threatening and permanent. It was pretty amazing. This is when I feel like, okay, this is what I signed up for nursing for in the emergency room, you know, to see somebody actually make it and get better. If I could look everybody in the eye, that was a part of my care from beginning to end. I would tell them, thank you for this life. Because without their dedication, without them showing up and caring in the way that they did, I don't know that I'd be sitting here today able to call my kids and tell them I love them. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do the work that I love. I wouldn't be able to live this beautiful life. And thank you is inadequate. But I hope that the way I live my life is indicative of the gratitude I feel to each and every one of them.